International law is a very important part of the field of law. International law has many things in it and one of the essential part in it is asylum and extradition. Today I am mainly focused on asylum. Hello everyone, I am Rusha Mukherjee, a student of Shwendranath Law College and currently interning with Lexis and Company. Today my topic of will be asylum because it is very important nowadays. When a person gets shelter in another country or anywhere else. Let us get into the concept of asylum. Asylum means shelter. An active production protection extended by political refugee from another state by a state which admits him on his request. Asylum basically involves two main parts. Number one, shelter which is something more than a temporary refuge. Basically not only a temporary ex existence but something which leads to some extent of permanence. And number two is a degree of active protection on the part of the authorities which have control on the territory of asylum. The Institute of International Law has defined asylum as the protection and in which a state grants on its territory or in some of a place under the control of certain of its organ to a person who comes to seek it. Now, if we come under the rights of asylum, Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, everyone has a right to seek and enjoy in other countries asylum from prosecution. It may, however, be noted that declaration simply recognizes the right to asylum. It does not grant any right to receive asylum. We can seek it, but it is not necessary that we will always get it. The so-called right or asylum is probably nothing but the competence of every state to allow a prosecutor alien to enter and to remain on its territory under its prosecution. Now if we tell about the types of asylum, here is what we see. Asylum may be classified into two types. One is the territorial, another is the extra territorial. In the asylum case, this is Colombia versus Peru. The International Court of Justice had explained that the distinction between the territorial asylum and the extraterritorial asylum or the diplomatic asylum in the following ways. In case of extradition, that is territorial asylum, the refugee is within the territory of the state of refuge. A decision with regard to extradition implies only the normal exercise of territorial sovereignty. The refugee is outside the territory of the state and where the offense is committed he is not there. Uh, the decision to grant him asylum in two ways derogates the from the sovereignty of the state. We will get this power only from the sovereignty of the state. Only the sovereign power can do it. Anyone who is not a sovereign is not entitled to do any sort of these work. If we talk about the territorial asylum, it is granted by the state in its own territory and is considered as an attribute to the territorial sovereignty of the state. On 20th March 1945, a convention on territorial asylum was adopted at Caracas. Article 1 of the said 
convention provides that every state has a right in the exercise of its sovereignty to admit into its territory such persons as it deems advisable with out through the exercise of the declaration of asylum adopted under the united nations human declarations right now if we come to the differences part then it states that this is the mere difference between the asylum and extradition this is a very important phenomena because in many of the cases we see that the criminal or the offender is actually able to flee from the hands of justice by using these techniques what do you think are these law really helpful and how should it be changed for the betterment of the entire world let me know in the chat box that's all for today if you like the video please like and subscribe to the channel that's all for today bye bye